Hello and welcome back to Wit Tips. Today we're going to be having a look at crafting imagery within your creative writing, be it description or narrative based, and we're going to be looking at three commonly used techniques, similes, metaphors and personification. So let's have a look at defining these three key terms then. A simile is when we compare something to something else using the words as or like. Um, and this the reason we use these is to try and make our descriptions more vivid. So essentially we're comparing one object to another object. Uh, so as you can see in the example here, teachers are like dragons. Um, often these uh, objects that you're comparing share characteristics or teachers might be fierce is the point that you're trying to make with a sentence uh, like you've used and a similar like you've used here. Okay. Uh, a little tip for you here, don't just think about comparing objects um, to each other but think about comparing feelings and behaviours as well uh, to make them more sense of vary your similes uh, that's quite a nice technique to try and use. The next technique then is a metaphor. Uh, I found in my years of teaching that students are very good at identifying metaphors they're not always as good as being able to put them and build them back into their own creative writing. Um, a metaphor as you can see from the definitions here is a way of describing an object in ways that are not necessarily true. In that sense, they are a lie. Uh, it's not something that you're supposed to interpret literally. Um, it is the opposite of literally metaphorically. And the second part of this definition I think is important. It's something that is symbolic or representative of something else. So very similar to the simile that we've just talked about. When you're saying something is something that it's not, it's because you want to draw your examiner or your reader's attention to the characteristics or the behaviours of that new object or feeling or whatever it might be that you're saying that your um, subject is. Okay, So if you have a look at the sentence below that will help uh, perhaps for you to see that. He thought he was fierce but really he was a pussycat. Now we're saying he was a pussycat not literally but because Pussycats are seen as quite soft, gentle, they're not fierce, they're not ferocious, uh, unlike a lion for example. Um, so we're not saying really he is literally a pussycat in the fact that he's got four legs um, and a tail. Um, we're saying that he's a pussycat because we shouldn't be afraid of him, there's nothing to be uh, fearful of there. It's representative and it's symbolic of something else. Um, so. Don't be afraid of using metaphors. Again, what this is entitled is crafting. You've just got to think about what is the right metaphor, what is the right object that you're trying to compare something to, and then what's the best way of doing it? Is it to use a simile? Is it to use a metaphor? Try to vary it, and again, try to craft it within your writing. The last technique then is personification. Personification is a type of metaphor um, so that's why I've put that as third in our list and as you can see from the definition there it's about applying human characteristics to non-human forms it's as simple as that and again these are things that are not necessarily true so if you have a look at the example we've got here the happy clouds danced along the blue sky clouds are not happy they don't dance it is a lie it's a non-human uh, behavior uh, sorry it's a non-human object which we've attributed human behavior of being happy and dancing okay uh, so these are also nice techniques to be able to build into your description because they can also build a sense of tone and atmosphere and that's very important when you're thinking about these techniques what is the tone and atmosphere that you're trying to create so let's have a look at a typical question that we might get in class uh, for homework or in a, an assessment or a GCSE examination. Uh, here we go. Your school or college is asking students to contribute some creative writing for its website. Describe a boat as suggested by this picture or write a story in which this setting features. So we're going to have a look at the first one of these tasks. Describe a boat as suggested by this picture. And you might notice something here. There is no picture. This won't happen in your assessments or your examinations. I've taken the picture out because I want us to think about what we see through my description before we actually see the picture. Okay, So I'll have a look at this description uh, that we've got here and try and picture the boat that I'm describing. The boat was as rusty as a nail. No paint or crew, it appeared lifeless. Its windows were small 
dark and dirty. So hopefully through that description you can see a boat like you've got on screen now. That was the picture, that's what I was aiming for, so if you saw something like that then I'm quite successful. Now, there is nothing wrong with the description that we've created here. I suppose it's quite true to the picture. Now, if we're aiming to create effective and to try and push into the top grades with our writing, we need to think about uh, moving away from just merely describing the picture and including a few techniques along the way to help us with that. As rusty as a nail, obviously, is a simile uh, that you've got in there. You've got small, dark, and dirty. There's a list of adjectives there as well. Um, and this is all true. Literally, this is what we can see in the picture. You have to move beyond that. And you have to think about what is the point? What is the point to your description? Or a better way of thinking about this is not what is the point, but what is the purpose? Now, if we start to think about a purpose to our description, if we start to think about what it is we want our reader or our examiner or our teacher to feel or think from our descriptions, then it'll give us something to craft towards, and that's very important. So have a look at this next description and then try and think about what it is I'm wanting my examiner or my teacher or my uh, reader to feel through this description. Same picture, I've used similar techniques, but I'm going for a completely different effect. I'm trying to give my description a purpose. So have a, have a listen to this description and see if you can find the detail and see if you can find what it is that I'm trying to create. This burly buoyant bucket of rust was creeping like a criminal towards the shore. It looked exhausted, devoid of paint, devoid of crew, devoid of hope. Outwardly it appeared lifeless, lifeless except for its windows, which looked like tiny black eyes, and behind them seemed not just a modicum of life, but a malevolence and an eagerness to reach land and to wreak havoc. Now my description has a clear purpose. I've looked at this picture, my eyes are drawn to this boat, I'm going to describe this boat. My purpose is I want to try and unsettle, unnerve, maybe even make my examiner and reader fearful of this particular boat. Okay? And I craft my imagery towards that. And by giving it a purpose, I've taken what was two or three quite short sentences in which I've kind of run out of things to describe and I've turned it into a paragraph of crafted detail. Yes, there's lots of vocabulary in there. Yes, we can talk about vocabulary in, in future videos um, because today I want to look at some of those techniques uh, that's being used. So if we have a look at the technique, uh, the very first one is that this is not a boat anymore. It's a bucket of rust. Um, again, here, I suppose I'm thinking about this technique. I'm thinking I want my examiner, my reader, uh, to try and feel like this is not an attractive boat to see. A bucket of rust, a bucket of anything makes the reader, and this is where vocabulary choices are important even in uh, creating and crafting imagery, very important. A bucket of anything is a lot. Okay, So this bucket of rust seems like it's not just a little bit of rust that's on this boat, it's a bucket full of rust. Okay, Quite a lot uh, of rust that's in here. Okay, So it helps to exaggerate it. Um, and again, it's something that's not very uh, appealing, not something very nice to look at. Uh, if we keep going, you can see there that I've used an embedded simile here in the middle of this sentence to describe the way that the boat is creeping in. Okay, So it's not just creeping in, I could just say that it was creeping upon the shore. Um, but here I've added an embedded cause, like a criminal. It's the first real sign, uh, this embedded clause to my reader, that there is something untoward about this boat. There's a little hint there. I'm not saying that it is criminal. Uh, I'm not using a, a metaphor here. I'm not literally saying um, that it is a criminal. I'm just putting this little, little symbol in here because I think that, that that like is enough. It's a hint as it comes towards the shore. It's like a criminal. At this point it may or it may not be criminal um, but it's like it looks a little bit like that. There's something uh, not quite right about it. There's a sense of foreboding and foreshadowing going on here in my choice of this early embedded simile. Uh, and as it continues, I've used another simile uh, lower down there, uh, which is 
like tiny, this is about the, the windows, like tiny black eyes. And again, your vocabulary choices are important. And uh, there's also a sense of personification here. It's like the boat itself is alive. Uh, it's got eyes and it's watching. And the eyes are important. The reason why I've chosen the windows as eyes is that they're watching the person watching this boat come in. Okay, suddenly and we start to change the the angle here of our and the atmosphere of our writing. Uh, whereas we're watching this boat, now it makes it seem like this boat is watching us. And the use of the colour here, the black eyes, uh, and again what black symbolises is this kind of perhaps deathly, darkly nature, this gothic nature perhaps to this boat as well. Um, so do build in vocabulary and really think about crafting your vocabulary choices within the images and the similars and the metaphors and the piece of personification uh, that you use as well. Um, and in terms of personification, I've just put in here that the boat looks exhausted. Of course, it's a boat. It's a mechanical thing. It's not going to feel exhausted. Um, so this is a human feeling uh, that we attribute to the boat as if this boat is tired and it's looking uh, for somewhere to stop and rest. Uh, but as you can see, as it goes on and this atmosphere changes, it kind of, this is, and this part of me crafting this, I'm trying to, again return back to that little bit of normality i don't want to tell somebody right from the off that this is an evil boat because it spoils it they people like to read and find things out for themselves it's like a criminal but is it if we can change and we say that it looks exhausted and we go back to its appearance we can build that up and that's all these images are for it's about building it's about increasing tone and decreasing tone it's about creating excitement and sometimes it's about returning back to some uh, period of perhaps uh, just ordinary description okay not every piece of technique and imagery and simile and metaphor and personification you put in there has to be super exciting you can't keep building your writing has got to have shared and tall and light and dark within the um, and it's got to build sometimes and come down sometimes so that's quite important and it all again comes through practice so have a go find yourself a picture continue this description if you will where would you take this what else would you uh, try and, and build around this for me I would embody this as somewhere if this was my task somewhere towards the middle to the end of my description I would have started perhaps a little bit further away uh, but have a go, have a practice, pick any other picture you want, try and use these techniques and try and think about why you're using them, what is the purpose, what are you crafting towards and your writing will be better because of it. Thank you.